on CBN. Well, there's the cutest little filly in town. <laughs> Sweetie, this is just like going from a Mack truck to a Jaguar. Uh, that's a gift. Kelly, dear, I'm sorry we woke you. I, I didn't mean to. Why didn't you wake me sooner? Did I miss anything? Kelly, sweetie. Mm, haven't seen you in ages. Say, that reminds me. We got some business to tend to. You remember that horse you picked for me? One by five lengths, and I had 50 across on it. Here, <laughs> buy yourself a mink jacket. Oh. <laughs> Say, how'd you happen to pick Fargo Bill? Well, you said he never won a race, and I felt sorry for him. <laughs> Bentley, baby, how would it be if Kelly left school and went to the track with me every day? Sure, just give this kid a racing form, tell her a sad story, and wherever the teardrop falls, that's the horse you play. <laughs> Darling, it's uh, getting kind of late. Don't you think you should go back to bed? Sweetie, couldn't I stay up for a little while? Oh, come on, Bentley. Let the kid stay up. She can sleep in school tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Winnie, I saw a movie of yours on television last night. Oh, you're kidding. You mean they're showing silent pictures on TV? Rendezvous in Burma. You were so beautiful in that scene where you said goodbye to the Air Force Major. Go, go, my darling. Your squadron needs you. A woman is born to suffer and wait and hope. Go, Donald, yeah, go! You go. You go right back to bed okay. now. Come on. Beautiful. And then that other scene when you were talking to Harold. Harold, it's Bart I love. There can never be anything between us. And then Harold says, Well, I reckon I kind of figured it was that way. But there'll never be another woman for me. Well, just a horse. Now, come on, let's get on the I'll bring you the racer, Paul, when I come in and say goodnight. Her room is a mess. She talks like, like I don't know what. Uncle Bentley, baby, Peter, sweetie, Jasper, doll. She never sleeps. She's being raised just like Topsy. She just grows. <laughs> I'm sorry, what would you want? Mr. Corey is here. Oh, send him in, send him in. Hi. Why don't you come in, Mr. Corey? Sure. Oh, Bill, come on in. How are you? And who is your charming companion? Bentley, I'd like you to meet my daughter, Julia. Dear, this is Mr. Gregg. So nice, Mr. Gregg. Father has spoken of you so often. Oh, well, as a client, I hope he spoke well. <laughs> Julie's just in for the weekend from school. Daddy tells me you have a niece my age. I hope to meet her sometime. Well, I hope so, too, dear. I'd, I'd like you two to meet. Daddy, you probably want to talk to Mr. Gregg in private. Why don't I wait in the outer office? All right, dear. I won't be long. It's been a great pleasure meeting you, Mr. Gregg. The pleasure has been all mine, Julie. Bye. Bye. Phil, how does a mug like you get such a delightful daughter? <laughs> Julie is the product of six months' polish at Miss Marquand's finishing school. Oh? What was she like before you, uh, you sent her up the river? Primitive. I'm trying to blot the memory from my mind. Her table manners, her personal habits, and her room. Well, we're just cutting the weeds in Kelly's closet today. <laughs> Board of Health trying to condemn it as a slum area. Well, if you're having any problems, why don't you consider Miss Marquand? Well, we have some small problems, Phil, but I've never thought of such a, such a drastic solution. I'm afraid I'd miss Kelly. Oh, we miss Julie, too, but believe me, it's worth it. That school really makes young ladies out of those girls. I don't know whether Kelly would like it. Not unless, not unless the library subscribed to the daily racing form. Why don't I drop a brochure by your house? Oh, I don't think so, Phil. They have wonderful activities there. There's, there's social dancing, there's horseback riding, skiing, fencing. Oh, no, I, I don't think so. I'd miss her too much. Oh! Ginger called Nancy, Nancy called Helen, Helen called Karen, and Karen called me. <laughs> now you're supposed to call Susan and Pamela, and when Pamela calls Leah, Leah is supposed to call me. And whoever breaks the chain is cursed by the voodoo god of the Incas. And if we all connect, we'll have a blast and go to the movies. Would it help you any if I got you a long stick with a nail on the end of it? But if Leah doesn't call me, well, I'll go bicycling instead. All right, sweetie. I'll talk to you later. Bye, doll. Now, Kelly, dear, would you mind... Oh, I forgot. I lost my bicycle. Where? In your room? <laughs> What's the matter, Uncle Bentley, baby? 
<laughs> Uncle Bentley, baby, would like you to get through one meal without these phone calls. Now, darling, dinner is a shambles every night. Will, will you please come back and sit at the table? Now, honey, I don't mean this to be entirely a criticism of you. I'm equally at fault. But you're being raised like this was a gypsy camp. Tonight, my night off. Uh, when you gypsies want dessert. <laughs> Peter, I'm trying to make a serious point. Now, as of tonight, there will be no more phone calls while we're eating. No more phone calls while we're eating. <laughs> Honey, just today a client came into the office with his daughter. About, about your age. And I don't like to make comparisons, but she was... Good-mannered? Yes, good-mannered. But that wasn't all. She was also... Tidy? <laughs> yes, tidy. <laughs> Peter, didn't you say something about this being your night off? I suppose she's one of those icky types that always says and does the right thing. She wasn't so icky. Kelly, darling, look, I don't expect you to bring home medals for neatness, but I am not doing my duty as a parent unless I give you the opportunity to, to grow up properly. Like the little icky girl that came into your office? Well, Kelly, there's nothing icky about doing and saying the right things. Now, do you know that that little girl, Julie, six months ago, belonged to your, uh, your tribe? And her parents were so concerned, they sent her away to school. Is that what you want for me? Why, no, dear, certainly not. I want you here with me. But I also want you to eat your dinner, and I want you to clean up your room every now and then. <laughs> All right, dear. All right. We'll, we'll fight the Board of Health together. <laughs> And no more phone call while we're eating. <laughs> Long distance? You must want head gypsy. <laughs> Hello? Why, Sheila! Como esta usted? How's Mexico City? <laughs> Need you ask? I'll go fix my room. What? Back tomorrow night? Oh. What a shame, I can't. I'm on the hot lunch committee at Kelly's school. They're having a big meeting tomorrow night. Well, all right. Peter, I clean my room. What are you trying to do? Ruin your reputation? <laughs> Peter, what was Uncle Bentley's life like before I came here? Pretty good every night. In awful rut. But he was having fun. You silly little girl. Now uncle's life full of meaning. Hot lunch committee, chairman cookie drive. Full life. <laughs> but I am a responsibility. Responsibility good for a man. If you don't tell me, throw his whole life away enjoying himself. <laughs> Why you ask questions? You have reason? I just wanted to be sure about something. I'll get it. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm Phil Corey. I'm an old friend of your uncle's. You must be Kelly. Is your uncle in? No, he's not here right now, but he should be home soon. Wouldn't you like to wait? Oh, no, thank you, Kelly. I just wanted to drop off this brochure. Your uncle's a little bit hesitant, but believe me, you're going to love that school. Julie says she'd be glad to show you the ropes. Of course, she was a little bit homesick at first, but now she doesn't even want to come home weekends. They have all kinds of activities there. There's social dancing, horseback riding, skiing, field hockey, ballet. Very personal client of yours would like to see you, Mr. Gregg. Why, Miss Gregg, what a pleasure. <laughs> It's a pleasure for me, too. Say, we haven't had one of our sessions for a long time, Kelly. How about lunch next Saturday? I don't think I'll be able to. I may be away at school. Hey, darling? What? What's all this school business? Well, I've been thinking about what we were talking about. And then Mr. Corey left this at the house. Oh. It sounds great, Uncle Bentley. See, they have skiing and... Horseback riding? Don, you, you know, I didn't ask Mr. Corey to bring this. Oh, I know you didn't, Uncle Bentley. It sounds like a swell school. I'm sure it's a good school. 
can't tell much from a pamphlet. Oh, I think it would be loads of fun. I'd meet a lot of new friends. And I've always wanted to learn how to ski. Donna, do you really want to go? <laughs> Why shouldn't I want to go? Unless you have some objection. Do you? I only want you to go if, if you want to go. Do you? Yes, I want to go. I told you. I love horseback riding and, and skiing and, and all the other things. Look, they have swimming and, and social dancing and tennis and badminton. It was no trouble at all, Mr. Gregg. I had some parents to see in Los Angeles anyway. Still a great load off my mind that you're taking her personally, Miss Marquand. Come along, Kelly. That's our flight. It's gate D. Well, we'll see in a couple of weeks, Kelly, if you need anything. Thanks, Howard. Maybe you can get permission to come home next weekend, darling. Maybe get permission not to go at all. Peter, I'm going to have a wonderful time. Sure you will. Horseback riding and skiing. I wish my father had sent me off to school. Lots of fun. I go away to cooking school when I'm 29. Make the water polo team. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle Ben. Bye, darling. Goodbye, Peter. Bye. Bye, Howard. Bye. Don't forget to ride. I'll write to you tomorrow. I've got postcard all written. <laughs> He's a going. Cut that out, will you, Howard? I wrote the words myself. It goes to the turn. All right, all right. Poor niece Kelly. Turn out of the house just like in East Lynn. Peter, we've visited the place. You know, it's a cheerful, friendly environment. You think I was sending her off to Siberia? Soon as you learn how to ski, Siberia next stop. <laughs> the only reason why she's going is because she, she asked to go. She was sent off to school. By an uncle so cruel. Now cut that out, will you? Know, you should keep playing after. <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on, I'll drive you home. No thanks. I think I'll take a bus. I walk. A fresh air, good for me. Hello. Hello, Ginger, dear. Yes, I heard from her today. Oh, she's very ha Ginger. Ginger. Oh, don't cry, Ginger. Yes, but... Peter, how about a game of chess, huh? Not me. Looked in East Kelly room. Very neat. Everything put away. Especially niece Kelly. <laughs> Howard! Well, hello, Mr. Gray. Why, my boy, I'm glad to see you. Kelly left his picnic basket at my house. I just Howard, have you it. eaten yet? Come on in. Come on, sit in. Have dinner. Oh, I've had dinner, Mr. Gray. Good. Oh, Tell me about yourself. Uh, well, how are things in school? Well, what's new in the science lab? Nothing much, Mr. Gray. You know what I'd like, Howard? How about coming over and playing your guitar for me sometime, huh? No, sir. I'm not playing the guitar again as long as Kelly's away. Oh. Well, I better be going. So many lives. Shattered. <laughs> Eight o'clock. You home early, Mr. Gray. You not enjoy yourself? Oh, I, I had a wonderful time. Just that I had her be in court early tomorrow. How about you? Oh, I have hilarious time. Breaking wine glasses in fireplace, flamenco dancing, million laughs. <laughs> Hate every minute of it. <laughs> Gee, this is ridiculous. She's only 250 miles away. Why, why don't we behave like mature, sensible adults? You behave like mature, sensible adults. I think I go to bed and cry my eyes out. <laughs> you visited the school. What, what's wrong with it? Oh, grounds nice, lobby nice. 
fact that he's smiling. Rip off mask, just like boot camp. <laughs> Sound like the training Marines. Very straight. And that Miss Marquand looked familiar. Suppose she's your old platoon sergeant. <laughs> that it. I knew I see her someplace before. <laughs> sake. And those smiling gods don't fool me. Peter, please go to bed. How can I sleep in warm, comfortable bed thinking how poor Nice Kelly sleep? I think I sleep on floor tonight. I'm sure they give her some straw to sleep on. You make jokes while Nice Kelly may be getting whipped tonight. <laughs> whipped? This is a fine school with a, a fine tradition. Sure, fine for parents to see. But what happened when they leave? Correct! March in the dinner? Correct! March into your room? Correct! Up in the morning, 4 a.m.? Break rocks for new dormitory? Well, good night, Mr. Great. Break rocks for new dormitory. Fantastic imagination. Troublemakers. Corey, your letter home today was not cheerful enough. I wrote about the skiing and dancing. Next time, mention the horseback riding. <laughs> Aren't you happy? Oh, yes, Miss Marquand. Gibbons, your parents sent you here to become a lady. And before you are released, we will make a lady out of you. That will be two more days without bread and water. Drag her to her cell, Corey. You have committed the cardinal sin, Greg. Homesickness. I couldn't help it. I miss Uncle Bentley and Peter. You are rotten to the core, Greg. We have ways of cheering up students. Not the dungeon, Miss Parkwood! Not in the dungeon. Hello, Miss Marquand speaking. Miss Marquand, this is Bentley Gregg, Kelly's uncle. Oh, yes, Mr. Gregg. I've been expecting your call. You have? All the parents get anxious the first week. Oh, oh yes. It, it's Kelly in her cell. I beg your pardon? I, I, I mean, is, is Kelly in her room? Yes. Uh, yes, most of the girls are in their room studying. Well, Miss Marquand, I must apologize for this call. I, I've been sitting around thinking and, and missing Kelly. <laughs> Who screamed? One of the girls laughed. I admit it does sometimes sound hysterical. Mr. Gregg, you do seem apprehensive. Why don't I send Kelly home for the weekend? Oh, would, would you do that, Miss Marquand? Thank, thank you very much. And I, I'm, I'm sure this won't occur again. Thank you. Bye. To order yours. When are you going to tell your Uncle Bentley about the school, Kelly? Oh, I like it all right. But Uncle Bentley wanted a lady, and boy, is he going to get one this weekend. Here's my father, Kel. Kelly! Kelly! Oh, darling, how are you? Uncle Bentley, dear. How nice to see you again. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to see you, dear. Wonderful to have you back, dear. Thank you, Uncle Bentley. It's nice to be home. I'd better not mention to Miss Marquand that you come to the dinner table without a tie. Why, does she always wear one? <laughs> Miss Marquand says the training we get at school can only be an adjunct to the training we get at home. Honey, when you get back, I wish you'd tell Miss Marquand... Do you think it's completely hygienic for Jasper to eat in the dining room with us? If he doesn't mind, why should we? Hello? Oh, yes, yes. Here, hold on a minute. Hello? 
Ginger, how are you? How nice. I wonder if you'd mind calling back later. We're dining. Thank you. Kelly, Ginger missed you terribly. I wouldn't have minded a short conversation. Miss Marquand says any interruption at dinner interferes with digestion. <laughs> Besides, I have a feeling I've outgrown Ginger. Outgrown Ginger? In five days? <laughs> Kelly, are, are you sure that you're happy? I mean... I, I mean, are you, are you satisfied with this school? Well, it's obvious it has improved my manners. Isn't that what you wanted? Yes, but I just wanted to be sure that you were happy. I'm happy. I'm unhappy. <laughs> Peter, where are you going? Nobody need me. I quit. Peter, we all need you. No, you were away at school. Nothing for me to do around here. Yes, but you were with me eight years before Kelly came. That different than you gay young bachelor. Now you lonely, sad old man. <laughs> I go to house with five, six children. Noise, dirty rooms, laughter. Well, Peter, I enjoy Miss Marquand's, but if it means you're going to leave. If you're serious about quitting, I'd take Kelly out of that school in a minute. I'm serious about quitting. Um, Uncle Pat, I, I really, really do think, think you I ought to stay. stay home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call Ginger and tell her a marvelous news. Peter, I couldn't have stood it another minute. Neither could I. Every time you quit, something nice happens. <laughs> Go unpack. Who paid? <laughs> Coming up, Eddie Albert and Deva Gabor in Green Acres. And tonight at 11 Eastern, Dan O'Hurley guest stars on Remington Steel. Only here on CBN.